It's Sunday morning, and every decent man and woman is listening to Test Miles with Nick Miles on FM News 101 KXL. Buckle in. It's Sunday morning time with Joe Cars for the next 60 minutes of your weekly automotive radio experience. I'm Nick Miles. You're listening to America's Automotive Radio Show, keeping connected with the automotive world. Locally created, nationally celebrated. What's on today's show? The fun and exciting cars that we've been driving. Uh, also, we will be talking about the biggest cruising of the year in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, meet the man behind it. Uh, Phil will be here. His name is Phil Medina. Uh, it's time to kick off Mini Takes the States, and I will be driving this event. Uh, Karen Grun, uh, the event manager, joining us on the phone. And we also will be talking about cars, things that you can do to them for under $150 uh, installed by Mobile West. And Peter will be here in studio. Uh, Ryan from Afterglow talking about some of the products he's been testing on uh, different cars from around the week. So talking about cars that we have been test driving this week, uh, Sean, what have you been test driving? Toyota Highlanders Limited, eight passenger, three rows, one IIHS top safety pick plus award. It's a nice, I don't know if you consider this a full size SUV or what class it'd be, but it, to me, it's like a luxury vehicle and I, I like everything about it. Not a lot of tech with it, but there is one cool little tech feature that I do like where you can there's a speaker up front so you can talk into it and the people in the third row can hear you without you having to turn your head and yelling at them and I forgot that I had it because I kept speaking really loud I had people in the back speaking really loud for them to hear me and they're like why are you yelling it just this is just a parent's dream come true uh, isn't it I'm just I visuals <laughs> visuals all I'm seeing is visuals <laughs> at this moment in time. but I it, it works and I mean it's great little tech I'm it helps parents, so you don't have to sit there and we, yell or turn your head to even. We do that yell with back. the limousines. We have little switches where we can talk to people in the back. There you go. I like that. Get in out of the sunroof. <laughs> That's right. Get in out of the sunroof. Quit hitting your sister. Drunken, crazy prom people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it comes with two engines. There's a four cylinder and a three point five liter V six. I had the V six model. It has two hundred and seventy horsepower and can actually tow up to five thousand pounds, which. It's a small boat if you need one. Comes in front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Fuel economy is a little low, but it is an eight-passenger vehicle, so you can get 18 miles in the city and 24 on the highway. Some of its competitions, the Ford Explorer, Honda Pilot, Pathfinder, Traverse, Durango, and I love some of the soft-touch features about this. I mean, everything in here feels luxury. Easy to navigate through the screens, and one of the coolest features is the little shelf that they have in there where you can throw your cell phone. Um, starting price is $30,490, and if you get one of the hybrid versions, you're up there in the $50,000 range. Yeah, especially for a, for a, oh, you know, when you're talking about a vehicle that's a the hybrid, an all-wheel drive, you're, you're, you're winning definitely too. Brad, what have you been driving? So I had... The Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, and I say that with a bit of a sigh because they tried really hard. It's their best-selling car. It, yeah, it, they get a participation trophy. <laughs> so you think so? I would. I mean, I would highly disagree with you. I I I liked it fine. It was cute, but compared to its competition, it is just so difficult. Now, it, classified as a subcompact SUV, I think it's more like a compact SUV, and that it's. Seats five, and it's got a lot of space inside. It was redesigned or brought out about two years ago, and they did an aggressive redesign for this year with front badgings. It's really nice. I just think it's uh, to drive it at speed or try and drive it at speed. The base engine, the 2.0 liter, just puts out 148 horsepower. The 2.4 puts out 168 horsepower, and it's just... You know, at 24 miles per gallon and 31 on the highway, I just wanted a little bit more in comparison to like the CX-3 or the Renegade. There's a host of other vehicles that look good, are nicer inside, better but, tech. But it has bigger interior than than, it does. than those cars. I mean, That's why I said it, it's kind of in, in the between RAV4, those. It's in the RAV4 playing field. Yeah. And it starts with uh, a base price of nineteen five, but that's See, for the that's, two point only. That's, that's where, it, where is. it goes. That's where it is. That's that's the niche market that Mitsubishi so have hit with. This they ha it has resonated with people though because their sales 
are substantially up 119% over May of 2015, 79.8% Outlander sales over last year, uh, for the year, excuse me. And so it's definitely hitting a market. And as I was driving it as a, a person of older age, I think it's an older person's SUV. It's got big knobs on it. The tech is easy to use. It's not overly complicated. It's big numbers the when you need to make, you make a though. phone call. It has the giant numbers. It does. <laughs> yes. it's, uh, a, I, it's a flip screen navigation. I remember, though, <laughs> driving that car, and it took me almost a couple of days to sync my phone up to it for some reason. Maybe I'm not that old because I, I was able to do it right away. <laughs> I, or uh, maybe your maybe antique it's... phone was easier <laughs> to hook up to it. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. But it's, you know, certainly for the price point, I mean, it could get up to the $27,000 range, but for mid-20s, you can get a substantial four-wheel, all-wheel drive car for, you know, a pretty good, pretty good deal. Uh, but it's, I think, just in a substantially competitive segment. So it's a, it's a hard one to recommend over something else. Again, right. as we talked about last week, right. it fits into the you might want to consider category. Right. I actually think it's it's a niche market. It's the best-selling car. They do about 25,000 of these mm-hmm. a year. It's probably half the company's revenue. It's uh, it's a, a brilliant car. I've also been driving a brilliant car this uh, this week. I uh, I went up to Sunset Porsche and uh, managed to pry the keys out of their hands for the brand-new Boxster. This is the 718. Uh, very nice piece of equipment. Just hitting the market right now. Top speed uh, is probably one of the basic things that I like about it the, the most. Uh, it also has rollover protection, side impact, two airbags, automatic climate control. Um, but it's just a four-banger, basically. It's a two-liter, um, 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine, and uh, it's got that turbo in it. And that's that's the thing that's kind of great. 300 to 350 horsepower, depending on the S or the not. Rear-wheel drive, about 28 miles a gallon. Uh, just handles like a dream. I mean, really does handle. Sounds like an amazing car. It sounds like the V8, you know, with a big exhaust, you know, just uh, the whole thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, four different trim levels, and it, what does it go up against? It's hard to say because this car doesn't have a lot of competition. You have to look at what people cross shop with it, and they don't cross shop. Maybe the F-Type. Wouldn't is, the TT or the Z4 go up against it? Yeah, but the price difference is so amazing. You know, I mean, the, the TT is so much less. Is the only problem though? I and this see is with the, the, this is the TT version, Porsche's version of the TT, basically. Yeah, I, and I don't know. I mean, I love the looks of it, but for some reason, I just see trophy wipes driving them. But not now. I think they changed the back end. If you see the new back end, I haven't them, seen the new back end. They're on very it, but... different. It's very square. It's uh, and that was the problem. I think uh, initially, it was kind of like too feminine. The car would it go up against maybe a Vet? I mean, that's the same price range. Yeah, I, I think, but it vets a V8. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously... This is, this is the problem with the car is that the competition is almost impossible with it because you, how do you classify it? Interior room, speed, price. I mean, it depends how you want to classify the vehicle as to what it goes Probably it competes with the, uh, a pre-owned, you know, maybe... Maserati or something the, the like that. The closest thing I would say is the F-Type mm-hmm. because it starts at 68000 I think the F-Type starts at about the same sort of price, um, but you wouldn't want to get one outside the dealer for less than $90,000. I mean, that that's just how they come out of the dealer. By the time you put everything on the car, by the time it, you've stocked it up exactly the way you want it, that's how it comes up. Uh, it, it's very comfortable. It's simple to drive. It has a high-tech infotainment system. The buttons are very obvious. The car sounds great. It looks great. It was just like, it's like one of those cars that's like a no-brainer. And it's you not know? too much car for somebody. No, and and it's like the F-Type, you know? It's a complete no-brainer. So uh, for me, I'd have to tell you that I'm, you, you, yes, maybe I could buy three Camaros for this, but I'd probably just buy the single, uh, the Porsche 19, uh, 7, 718. When we come back, we've got a lot more to talk about on the show. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, things going on in Vancouver. It is the biggest car show in Vancouver. It's uh, coming up in the next uh, week or so, and you want to be at it. It's called Cruising the Gut. We'll be finding all about that coming up next on Test Miles. I'm Nick Miles. Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com. It's 
staying connected with the automotive world, you're listening to our show, testmiles.com is the website. I am Nick Miles, your host, and uh, joined by our crew, Sean Walker, Brad Boyer, Jen, and Ryan. Is it right if I don't use your last name, Jen? Sure. Okay, just checking. We also in the studio have a special guest. We'll get to him in a moment or so. I just wanted to mention, if you want to uh, read some articles about cars, one of the best places to do it is in Saturday's Oregonian. You can see what I write about the vehicles in there. All right, Jen, here you go. Ready for your fun fact. Three, two, one, go. The first fun fact of the day is in November 1899, E. Henry Weemey was the first person to own an automobile in Portland, Oregon. It was the local motorboat bill. It's a one-seat affair looking like a buggy with a horse, but it actually had an engine under the seat. You know the best part of that fun fact? His name was Weemy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Mr. Weemy. <laughs> I'd like to sell you a car if possible. I thought it was Brad who owned the first car. Uh, not in Portland. But he was Brad's in Vancouver. Local. And Brad was oh, Vancouver. Vancouver. And it was about 40 years before that. So... <laughs> It, yeah, anyway, there's a lot more jokes where that came from. All right, let's talk about uh, what's going on. Uh, big car show coming to town. It's uh, July 16th in Vancouver, Washington, one of the biggest car shows and the cruise-ins of the year. The man behind this uh, crazy car cruise-in show is uh, Phil Medina. Phil, uh, you're from Vancouver, Washington, and this takes place in Vancouver, Washington, right? Yeah, right on Main Street. Um, it, isn't that incredible that... This is the Vancouver, Washington is a smaller part of our metropolitan area, yet it has the biggest car show in the area. Yeah. Is every do you do you have to be a car freak to live that side of the Columbia? No. So, no, okay. I'm just I'm just wondering because we have <laughs> three car freaks in the studio now. It helps. It does. The the bad thing is we have sales tax. Yeah, and that's right. You buy all your cars in Oregon and you just take them across. <laughs> Keep them registered there. Yeah. Yeah. You do? Yeah, you, you do. You do have to pay for it. How, how do you how do you get the idea for cruising the gut? Uh, it was kind of handed down from uh, my family, uh, my grandparents, my mom, my dad. They all talked about cruising, and uh, when I was in high school, uh, we cruised Highway 99. So you know, they kind of embraced the fact that we were cruising because that's what they did. Except they did it down on Main Street, from Dairy Queen to well, I guess from Dairy Queen to Spick and Span, which is now Muchos Gracias. That was the spot, and they go, it was the gut. I mean, it's where everyone hung out yeah. from the 50s all the way up to about 84. I think the, running with a the theme of cruising with the gut, you definitely have to have a lot of fried food because then that supports the cruise in the gut <laughs> whole thing. Too. Or beer. Or beer. Yeah, same thing. Um, so when when did it start? I mean, you obviously had this dream. Uh, yeah, I had two, this idea. 2009. Um, you know, in 2008, I uh, talked to a few friends and, you know, thought the idea, because I'm submerged in the car culture, you know, and we go to all these car shows and you sit around in a hot parking lot and just look at them. The best part about the car show is when they come, when they leave, right? right. So I thought, man, we used to cruise, well, you know, let's bring it back. So I, I knew they banned it everywhere. So I, I went with the proper authorities and asked if we could do it. And it's funny, they said in Vancouver, they never really had an ordinance. They just ran them off. I'm like, oh, that's Okay. No, no one jumped for joy, but no one said no, right? So right. I made a flyer in my basement in 2009, made a date, went to all the, I'm, I got in a car club, went to a bunch of local car clubs, said, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And realistically, I hoped for a few hundred cars and people, and it was thousands of people in cars the first year. It just blew my mind. It blew everyone's mind, right? right? Including the businesses. The businesses, that's when they were like, hey, how can we do this again? That's you know? what the Rose Festival is missing, like a cruising. You know what I'm saying? We have the Starlight Parade. We have the Grand Floral Parade. We need a cruising parade. But we just should have, I think next year. Who do we talk to about that? My aunt. She was the prime minister. My uh, cousin's going to be the prime minister next year of the Royal Rosarians. All right. Can you I'm fix on it? it? I'm can, on it. Can you? are all over it? Yeah. Have like, like the Royal yeah. Cruise. Maybe what we should do is the Starlight Parade, we should just double the length and have Cruise and all, all these cool cars like before the parade starts. So, so right. I drove in this uh, event last year, and it's fun. You don't have to sign up. You can just show up. And the streets are lined with people, and like you talked about, the stores, they get involved now. They open up. It's so fun. And we got cheered. We were in the painted limousine last year. I've got something else in mind. But... <laughs> that would start me on that painted limo. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, it was great fun, and the kids had fun. They get to cruise down the street. And, well, I think that's know, the best part of stuff. is they are uh, – everyone is uh, – it's everybody, little kids – Grown adults. I mean, uh, everybody loves it. It's a, and that's the thing. I think why it's so big is the history, and it's free. All right. Uh, you raise money too. Yeah, yeah. We uh, 
Well, money, it's funny. We did the sponsorships because, well, we had to do bathrooms. Uh, after the first year, there was that many people down there. We had bathrooms, the printing costs, right. uh, you know, and then uh, permitting, you know. Uh, we had to get insurance. Even you know? though there's no audience, we still had to get yeah, a permit. Yeah, funny. Yeah. There's well, a long welcome story to involved local in government. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and um, so we try, and we do, we try to make it the summer's largest uh, food drive. Uh, we do a big food donation to the share house, and then we donate some of the proceeds of the T-shirts. Um, we actually, on the paper, it says the share house. We did the first year, but we have gotten involved with the skill center in Vancouver, and I like to help out the automotive program. I kind of think the, the kids of the future are hot rodding, and anything I can do to keep kids interested in cars, regardless if it's a diesel or a Honda, just keep them coming, you know? All right, running out of time, but let's ask you, what's the car you were going to bring to Cruise in the Gut this year? <laughs> I'll be in my 2008 Chevy Silverado in air conditioning just okay. on the back roads. I'm always, I, don't, yeah. I don't get to enjoy it as much as anyone else. Really? Uh, no, I don't. It's it was busy. your it's idea. It's a busy day. It's it, my busiest day. You know what you need? Minions. Yes. That's what you need. Minions. You know, to my best the day way. is what? the day after when we were cleaning up because I really? just... So quiet. It, it's like all over. It's and, great. And it's you know, a great. It's a great time. One thing I love about this event is you can actually just drive it. It takes a minute to actually drive up and down Mil or Main Street, but then you just find a parking spot and walk, and you can see so many other cars. Like I actually last year when, or the year before when I went, I was just walking up to talking to people as they're driving because talking about their cars because that's how slow you're going. And there's events going on on the sides of the roads as well <laughs> and in the parking lots. They have. Vet clubs, Camaro clubs, Mustang clubs all over the place. And you can get involved in other communities with it. Uh, this sounds like a lot of fun. It is very fun. Definitely. If, if I wasn't actually uh, driving across the United States at this point, I would be there. But the rest of the team will be, probably with their car. Yeah. Jen was there since the beginning. What? When did it start, Jen? 2009. All right. Brad's been there since the beginning of Vancouver. <laughs> So he's been cruising it before Van before there was even the streets. There was just mud, mud roads there. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the road trip I'm going to be taking to also raise money for food banks. Mini takes the states. It's coming up on Test Miles. I'm Nick Mike. It's Test Miles on FM News 101. We'd like to thank you for being part of our radio show. You can get more information at testmiles.com. Of course, always watching my car segments on Coin6 News, reading the newspaper art articles in the Oregonian, and uh, also listening to us 24-7 at testmiles.com. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the, uh, in the world of uh, driving around today. And with another fan fact, here is uh, Jen. Jen, what's, what's our fun fact today? In 1999, the Mini was voted the second most influential car of the 20th century behind the Ford Model T and ahead of the Volkswagen Beetle. I think it's actually the most influential uh, car of the century. Mini Takes the States is coming up as a two-year experience, and uh, we I wanted to drive it this year. Uh, this year, it goes all the way from Atlanta up over the top of the U.S. and ends up in Palm Springs. Uh, Karen Grunt is joining us. She is the event manager for Mini USA and our guest on the show to explain the adventures across the country and the partnership with Feeding America, which uh, incidentally just happens to be based here in Portland, Oregon, so uh, let's ask you the first question. Who can participate in Mini Takes Estates? Anybody who owns a Mini can join us on Mini Takes Estates. So there's still time. We have about 10 days. If you don't own a Mini, you can go out and get one. Join <laughs> us. You have to have a Mini to be on Mini Takes Estates. Uh, just go buy yourself a mini. That's uh, that's the that's easy. It. That's the easy answer to that one. Uh, you know, this rally goes through fifteen, basically uh, fifteen different locations across the United States. It's been taking you, you two years to plan. Uh, you're stopping off in some major cities, but you're also stopping off in some smaller cities around the United States. So, how do you plan the route? What goes into that the, the planning of of mini takes the states? Well, this is our sixth time that we're cutting the country, and we really look for a different route every time we do it. It's hard to, even though America's a big country, it's, it's hard to find a different route that our many owners have not traveled. So we always look for the off the beaten path, and we find um, places that we think would be interesting, curvy roads. We never go on the highways. And so this year, this, we chose a, an arc shape, northern route. 
Uh, and now uh, it's interesting that you decided to go up and around the top of the country uh, instead of down uh, the coast or, or through the south. But every every time that you have to choose that, where do you choose to start in the end? Why do you choose to start in Atlanta and end in Palm Springs? Well, every year, um, actually the last few years, we've tried to go coast to coast. Uh, this year, we are doing track to track. So we're starting at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And we're ending in thermal racetrack. And it's also to show, just to hark back to our um, our racetrack, our, our heritage, money motoring heritage. And then uh, the ticket prices to actually be involved, uh, it does cost, cost money to drive many takes the states. How does that work? Well, part of the registration fee does go to our Feeding America charity. But we do charge because we'd like to know how many people are going to join us along the way. So a single ticket is $40, and that gets you into our morning event and evening event. And then if you want to do more than that, it's $75, and you can do one leg, or you can do all 15. Excellent. Now, I, I have five dogs, Karen. Can I bring them all along with me? You can if you hydrate them. <laughs> it's going to be hot <laughs> along the way. Uh, but Midneys have pretty good air conditioning. I should be fine, shouldn't I? Should be. <laughs> In our locations, we're hoping to have... Um, our little doggy areas that we can provide some refreshments for both our motorers and our co-pilots. All right. The one thing that really got me interested, of course, Minnie, it's not hard for me to be in love with Minnie. I'm a, I'm a Brit. I grew up in, in England. Uh, Minnie my, was one of my first cars was a Mini. I used to have a Mini van, the true Mini van. And uh, I, Obviously, a big fan of the van. That's it's not hard for me to want to drive many takes the states. But there's another thing that really pushed me towards being involved this time around, and that was the fact that you're trying to feed America. Now, I know there's a lot of school kids who rely on two meals a day coming out of the school system. So they get breakfast and lunch in the school system, and then their parents provide them with an evening meal. But during the summer holidays, the summer vacations, when they're not in school, some of these kids are going with one meal or even less meals per day. So one of the ideas behind the Mini Takes Estates event was you're trying to feed America, and you, you have a partner that you're doing that with. Yes. We, well, we, we always choose a charity partner for many takes of states, and this year we chose Feeding America because we thought it was a great way to bring this awareness across the country because we are going across the country. And, yes, you're right, there's millions of Americans facing hunger, and it's not just for kids. It's seniors, it's people like you and me that you wouldn't even think of. So um, we are hoping to provide 3 million meals to those in need. And that's uh, collecting food in each, uh, you know, in each location and passing it on to the local food banks. Or how does it? How's it going to benefit the uh, the food banks? Actually, it's more than just the collection of food. We do ask people to bring food, but we're we're looking more to to raise dollars. We want people to to dig in their pockets and and give to the cause. It's it, we can do more when we get actual money to support the cause. And for every dollar donated. Uh, we provide 11 meals. So with that, you know, we do have a donation link set up on our minitakesestates.com website, on our charity page, and we're asking both our many owners, but also anybody that we meet along the way to donate to this cause. Now, I wonder if you could uh, just give me a preview of the route. So starting in Atlanta, uh, where does it head to from Atlanta? And then sort of walk me through some of those legs. So from Atlanta, we, we head out north. Um, we usually do about six hours of motoring a day. From Atlanta, we go to Charlotte, North Carolina, and then head on up to Richmond, Baltimore, uh, move across to Pittsburgh, Detroit. We have to go to Detroit. We always have fans there. St. Ignace is, where we, is our northernmost part of the, the journey, and that's the upper Michigan Peninsula. From there, we head out to Green Bay, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls, Sturgis, uh, Cheyenne, you're testing me now, <laughs> Park City, <laughs> Las Vegas, and then ending in Palm Springs. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So there's there's a little bit of everything in there. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, rural. There's a little bit of culture. There's some southern culture. There's some northern culture, some sea culture, especially Baltimore and the crabs. Uh, there is a, a lot of 
like uh, wild country in between. And then you've got things like Park City, where the Olympics were held, of course, um, and down in Utah. And then all, you know, Las Vegas, of course, the probably the, one of the most exciting things that happens. Uh, what's it, What do you think the party is going to be like in Las Vegas? That's actually a night on their own because we don't have to tell you what to do in Vegas. <laughs> they do it on their own. Okay. I think the most exciting will be thermal. And actually, the racetracks are, are certainly a highlight there. How many owners love to take their own cars and drive them around the track? So, so this uh, is the opportunity for them to get their um, their own wheels on the track. But also, in at thermal, we provide them with hot laps, so oh, structure-driven wow. laps. That's going to be a hard one to pry me out of. I'm going to be want to. I'm going to want to stay there and do the hot laps on every single uh, racetrack too. Well, proud to be a mini owner, and I'm proud to be joining you this year on Mini Takes the States. Uh, and for those people that don't know, we will be doing the show from the road over the three weeks of Mini Takes the States. Uh, every single show will be coming from the road, and so you'll get to hear the whole thing on this radio station at our usual test miles time, and to you know talk to some of the people along the way, talk to some of the people from Mini, some of the owners, some of the drivers, some of the people we meet, some of the people that are helping raise money for the uh, those people who have uh, less meals than we do every day, and uh, you'll be able to enjoy Mini Takes the States from your own radio set. But we'd also enjoy it if you go to Mini Takes the States website and sign up if you have a Mini and at least join me for some of the ride. Uh, I'd love you to be my company. I know that a lot of my friends from around the country, including Roman Micah from the Fast Lane Car, is going to be doing some of this with me. So you'll be able to see a lot of this on TV too. Um, A great event, Karen. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to start. So a big party in Atlanta to kick it all off, right? Likewise. Looking forward to it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being our guest on Test Miles. Coming up, we're going to talk about things you can put in your car for less than $150. Peter from Mobile West is going to be here. You're listening to Test Miles. I'm Nick Miles. Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com. From the Test Mile Studio, this is America's Car Radio Show, and thank you for being part of the Automotive Nation. For more fun facts, you can go to our webpage at testmiles.com. The last fun fact of the day is the oldest dealership in the area is located in Bellingham, Washington. Dahl Ford was established in 1900 and is still in existence today. I think Brad worked on the building of that, uh, that building, actually. Uh, Peter Clover is here from Mobile West. Of course, you can find them on uh, MLK. Uh, Peter, I got $150 in my pocket. I want to spend it at your store. What can I spend it on? There are lots of things that we can spend it on. Lots of things that will add to your experience of your car, make things easier, make it more enjoyable to drive. All right. So throw them at me. Throw, okay. Give first, me some choices. All right. First one, phone mounts. Uh-huh. Now, used to be back in olden times that you had to get a specific cradle for a specific phone, and we had to change those out every time you change phones. Right. Now they've got magic of magnets. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah both... So like a magnet on the back of your phone doesn't hurt the phone? No, actually, they go the other way. They put a small little uh, metal plate underneath your case. Uh-huh. Magnet goes on the dash. So oh, he's oh, either on oh. flat spot of the dash, up right. on, you know, suction cup on the dash glass, or... Um, Clip in your vent. This is if you, this is if you're silly enough not to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, right? Well, of course, that you should always have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It's so much easier to use. But some of us aren't going to have that yet. So I have uh, I have Android Auto in one of the vehicles I've been driving. So so much. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's, anyway, all right. So uh, okay. 150 dollars so is ma- a magnet. Ha- right. So if you don't get the. Le- Latest technology, at least this will make it a lot safer and a lot easier to use your phone, be able to use the maps, be able to see it, be able to touch your phone. And, right, and so you just basically easily. throw it up and your phone sticks right on the dash. Boom. Simple and easy. I love it. All right, what's next on the list? Well, okay, if your car is made before 2012, it doesn't have a streaming Bluetooth audio. Right. People want to be able to have it wireless, be able right. to not plug in cables, be able to just play your tunes easily. Yeah. Um, you know? Uh, iSimple makes their music stream, which is an add-on piece so that you can add Bluetooth to anything that has an auxiliary input. Oh, nice. Yeah. So simple and easy. We go hardwire one of those in, 
feed it into the factory aux, aftermarket aux, whatever you want to do, and then you can stream your music wirelessly, which is probably the best way to get music out of Android at this point. So Right, and, and that's what I do. I have to tell you that, um, you know, BMW cars, there's Rolls-Royce, BMW, and uh, uh, Minis have Spotify in them. Mm-hmm. And I just recently, um, my friends sort of introduced me to Spotify because there's several things that people don't know about Spotify, which one of them is, of course, you can share playlists between people. And I always find other people. I find a song and then it says, this song appears on these people's playlists. And, the, you know, then I download their whole playlist. The great thing is that even if your phone's not connected, all the music is still there. Absolutely. Which is uh, which is great. So you'd be able to do that. You'd be able to stream Spotify with this Bluetooth device. Absolutely. For those of you that don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that have that all built in. Yeah, you losers. All right. What about, uh, what other stuff you got for 150? <laughs> well, you know, there's a great new piece if you're a satellite radio person, if uh-huh. you like Sirius XM. Sirius XM has launched a new universal piece that we can add to any car. It's called the Commander Touch. Okay. And instead of being the old school, strappy on the dashy, ugly things, yeah. this is a new, sexy, touchscreen controlled add-on player that we can install to any vehicle. Radio has always been sexy, Peter. Sexy. Just making it sexier. Well, but having a touchscreen interface like your cell phone or, you know, a modern stereo right. in the car that you already drive right. is fantastic. Love it. So it looks great. It's a small little display piece that we can put in a convenient spot, get your 170 channels of music, news, information in a clean and elegant way, which nice. is the thing that's been lacking about the add-on pieces. All right. Do you have yeah. one more or are we done? No, of course we've got more. Yeah. I, Peter's got $150 things he can sell you all day. <laughs> of course. These, the paperclip, $150, yeah. you know what it does? It cleans out your air vents. <laughs> yeah, with this paperclip. Sorry, go on. What, what do you got next, Peter? Well, actually, th- there are two more things. Most importantly, I was going to say, you know, 100 bucks will buy you enough dynamat to make your sa- do your doors, make your speakers Sorry, sound did you say right. dynamat? Dynamat, the sound ending. Oh, like we keep talking about I thought you said dynamite, and I was like, what <laughs> is going on here? It's like well, dynamite know, for a car. No, dynamite. That will blow up your sound. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dyna- dynamat, sound ending materials. Right. Like the number one thing that's wrong with all factory stereo speak systems yeah. is the way the doors are actually built. Right. Like they don't trap the back wave. There is no bass. You try to turn it up loud enough, and you just get weird vibrations, and the right. door panels vibrate. Right. So, hundred bucks worth of dynamat, sound in the door structures. All of a sudden, the speakers that you have sound like home audio. So wait, so I shouldn't do what Ryan did and just take that um, expanding foam insulation and just spray that inside my doors? Not at all. All right. Not at all. Traps moisture. It's going to be a hot mess of awful things. Oh. Uh-huh. But you know, if you think about it this way, like, you know, uh, turning your doors into speaker cabinets, blocking a lot of exterior road noises, but trapping the back wave. Makes it be rich right. and full right. and natural and right. makes it sound like home audio speakers. Even Perfect. the basic speakers that come in your car are about the same quality that Bose uses in their $900 bookshelf speakers at home. Right. Well, that's a $20 speaker in an $880 cabinet. Right. So turning your doors into cabinets for 100 bucks with the materials transforms how it sounds. All right. What's the last Absolutely. one on your list? Newest thing. Okay, so this is only slightly more than 150 bucks, and it just got launched, and it is shipping now. Kenwood has a new dash cam that has lane monitoring, that has accident avoidance technology mm. built in. It's two hundred dollars, so mm. it's a little bit above above our you know number, but it is going to be the coolest, greatest, simple and easy add-on to be able to make your driving safe. Right. Be able to record what's going on in case you do get in an accident. Right. It will actually record if your car is parked and somebody bumps into it so it can see in front of you and tag the accident. Oh, so it's just amazing. Like, it's I just like the new Cadillac. The new Cadillac has that recorder in it, so now you can purchase that on your own and get that in your sure. own car. Sure. I don't need to spend $75,000 on a Cadillac. Right. You can spend 200 bucks at Mobile West and have the same technology. Oh, I like that's, that idea. That's... That's absolutely the number one thing to think. Handful of wins there, Peter. Well, of course. All right. Where do we find Mobile West? Uh, MWPDX.US or 2111 Northeast MLK here in Portland.
Go you in, can't miss it. Go in and ask for uh, for Peter. He is going to uh, give you lots of special things and some good deals as well. So Ryan's with us. What have you been testing this week? Well, I've been testing out more Mother's products. I have this thing called Revision Glass Cleaner, and I am told by the dealerships that I'm no longer allowed to use it on the glass because stickers don't even stick to it. That's how good it works. An amazing product. Works really well. Okay. All right, Test Miles here 24-7. You can go to testmiles.com. Please read my articles in the Oregonian and watch Coin 6 News where you can see uh, all my TV reports. We'll be back next week with another packed show, but but here's the caveat. We're going to be on the road with Mini Takes the State, so you're going to hear what it's like to travel across the country, the whole United States, the ultimate road trip. That's all coming up on next week's show. I'm Nick Miles.